man, it's fine. sunglasses on and basketball shoes drying in the sun I rub bug into paper then brush my hair oh with sunglasses on I look up the cliffs scout the beach and maybe I'll look through window panes of the rocky coast with my heart or maybe I'll listen to my friends discuss intelligence as the ancient tide rolls in sunglasses on I see the little boy and I study the nuances which make this beach this beach with sunglasses on Thank <laughs> you. 
Fuck you, corporate America. Fuck, Fuck you, you, corporate America. Fuck you, your assumed assumptions. Fuck you, your Fuck assumed you. assumptions. Fuck you, young computer bourgeois. And your conspicuous consumption. Fuck you, Fuck your you conspicuous personal security consumer. enterprise. Fuck you for fucking our environment. Fucking our environment. Fuck you. Fuck you for your need to be a winner and to have it all. Fuck you, you unconscionable little bastard. Unconscionable bastard. Fuck you, your Michelob weekend. Suck and my dick. Gotta Fuck get you. Mealy mouth little scumbags. Fuck you, your shitty little Mealy mouth divinity. little scumbags. Fuck you. Fuck you, your Fuck you, your materialistic Bush. anti-spiritualism. Pat Robertson. Fuck you, your rational convenience. Fuck you, your reductionist imperialism. Fuck you, your push to secure our borders. Fuck, Fuck you, you, your George Bush. Fuck you, your George Bush. Peace. Fuck you, your Fuck Pat you, Robertson you, you moral correct materialistic man. righteousness. Fuck you. Fuck you, your highest priority. Fuck you. Fuck you, your oppressive dogmatic commercialism. Just Fuck you, your Fuck military you. buildup. And your fucking Oliver North fucking traitor. And your fucking Ed Meese, too. Fuck you, corporate America. And your assumed assumptions. Fuck you. I simply wish to say fuck you, and I mean that sincerely. I really do. <laughs> fuck you, corporate America. Fuck you.
the Institute of Absurdity presents the study of the irrational. The following work, The Kant Syndrome, has been deemed the most important work by an emerging artist for the year 1988 by the Council on Foreign Relations. The technical term for this condition is close-mindedus parallaxissimus de cuntada, and a more detailed accounting of the syndrome can be found in Ladies' Home Journal, January 16, 1987. They're always jumping to false conclusions. Yeah, reading more into it than there really is. Uh -huh. Disallowing the explanation of others in favor of personal biases, often based on past mm. history. Yeah. Their pettiness, man. It's always attached to details. And it's so trivial. Trivial written overemphasis on yep. the self. Closed. Yeah. Closed yeah. as shit, mm. man. Closed. And the defense mechanisms. Every time you trigger something, they shut it all out, all other considerations but their own. Yeah. The, 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 their the own fears. fears. Yeah, their fears the and worries, man. Yeah, bitches or cunts. Yeah. Man. A victim of the cunt syndrome will find himself exhausted by attempting to reason with the narrow mind of an afflicted cunt. The cunt is generally female. However, in many cases, the male exhibits these traits also. And more and more, we are finding this syndrome to have crossed sexual lines. The victim of the cunt syndrome will use all means to rationally discuss the given situation or situations. However, due to the closed nature of the afflicted cunt, all attempts at peaceful negotiation are met with further hate and anger, generally reflecting the inner nature of the said cunt. A victim of the cunt syndrome can often be heard saying, I'm beating my head against the fucking wall! Haven't you heard anything I've said? That's not what I meant at all. You're completely twisting things around and making me the guilty one. You're so full of hate and resentment, you bitch. You can't even see that I'm trying to work this out with you. You're always right, aren't you? It's never your fault. Always somebody else's. You make me sick with your petty bullshit. You selfish, conceited little cunt. Everything has to be your way or not at all. It's always me, me, me with you. When are you going to share and open up a little bit and admit that the world does not revolve around you? After several years of cunt-like practice, the cunt reaches an age where all attempts to turn the cunt from this type of behavior are met with failure, resentment, hate, and a vile tongue. Many victims of the cunt syndrome currently reside in state and federal penitentiaries due to forced responses brought on by prolonged exposure to individual cunts or groups of cunts. The victim of the cunt syndrome has little option other than simply walking away from the cunt or the occasional murdering of the cunt. Again, all attempts at reasoning with the said cunt are useless. The cunt is found increasingly in all walks of life and no individual is safe from the influence and wrath of the cunt. The cunt employs a variety of disguises a victim will be shown the cunt's true nature given a relatively short period of exposure to the cunt. The cunt syndrome is irreversible and no current treatment save for electroshock and frontal lobotomy have been proven effective. Effective. When dealing with a cunt, it is advised that you avoid conflicts at all costs and should conflict arise, that you discount virtually the entire subject matter and content of the discussion. The cunt is to be pitied, but in no instances should the cunt or the actions of the cunt be allowed to run freely. Dr. L. Robuse, in a discussion to the Princeton Medical Society in October of 1985, had this to say about the dread cunt syndrome. Yes, the cunt syndrome is everywhere, and yes, we must remain on the alert for its presence, but under no circumstances are we to be influenced or persuaded by the rantings and ravings of this horrible creature. The cunt syndrome has reached epidemic proportions. Trust your instincts. Stand up to this oppressive creature, the dreaded cunt. I was walking by my father's bookcase when his deck of blue-skinned bicycle playing cards whispered to me, Hey, pal, want to see a trick? 
I stopped for a moment and thought about the implausibility of a deck of cards performing its own tricks by itself, then said, no, not really, and moved on. About an hour later, I was placing a copy of the intimate journals of Charles Baudelaire back up on the same shelf when I heard some soft, <laughs> quiet weeping coming from that deck of cards. I grabbed the deck and opened it, then apologized for hurting her feelings. Cards are, oh, so sensitive, you know. And then said, sure, what the heck, show me the trick. I'd seen the trick before, but, geez, it was the least I could do. I'm rebuilding my mind. I can, I can be, be anything, anything I, I want, want to I'm be rebuilding my this mind time around. around. Become more functional. You know, I'm not doing a thing. I'm not I can be anything I doing. want to be. I'm not on that around. doing, doing, doing treadmill anymore. The need to do. I no, instead, I'm shaping my consciousness right at this very moment. Out of the swirling mass of lusts, frustrations, fantasies, visions, illuminations, I revelations. I want to be this time around. It's called reprogramming my nervous response reaction system. I, can be I think somebody I called it metaprogramming or something around. like that. But I'm readjusting my cognitive circuitry, reconditioning my patterns and habits. I can be anything Basically I want rebuilding to be my mind this time around. So that I can function and participate and heal myself. I can be anything hey, I want to be. Ain't nobody else gonna do it around. for me. They just laid some fresh hot asphalt on this tree. It's glowing warm. I think I'll sleep near it tonight. Right here, behind the rose bushes, close enough to feel it breathe upon me. Whenever you realize it's now, look about you and mark that occasion. Remember it, my friend. Whenever you can see that it's now happening as you're doing it in front and about you, whenever you find yourself right there, count it as a blessing and accept your distractionless state as a condition of now. You're present at the unfolding moment. You're present. You're making it as it's happening, babe. It's happening now. So celebrate it. Revel in it. It only happens once, man. Then it changes. And it changes again. And all the while you're in the now. Congratulations if you can be there for the now. We cannot trust business anymore. We are past the point of investing faith in the business community time and again. The business community has failed to meet the needs of the people. We're shown this every day. Every time we turn on the radio or TV, the business community has been built on hucksterism and deceit. They, in fact, have no other concern for people than from taking their money. All other considerations are meaningless, sold behind the illusion of product salvation. The business community of the United States of America Incorporated TM cannot be given the power to rule over us any longer. Business first, it's a lie. And businessmen can no longer be trusted or given authority over us. They've shown their disrespect for the common man every time short-term personal advantage is at stake. They'll fuck you in the back, readily, no questions asked, no fucking second thoughts. They'll fuck their mothers to achieve their rationalized correct goals. The fucking business scum. They're the motherfuckers of the high priests of America. How much longer will the false rule of the business mind fucked imprison us? We need to challenge the assumed authorities of the entrenched business community. They do not represent the real owners of the society. They represent greed. Uh, <coughs> yes, thank you, uh, Doctor. Thank you. Well, now, retestinating upon my previous declination, given, in order of replication, the feasibility of the committee's funding, per se, on the basis of the research uh, and or entelechy <laughs> of the previous no, obfuscation. No, now, no. fortuitously, in consideration of the former, and I wish to make this point perfectly clear, I might add, in that I'm merely assuming the presumption of an obviously otherwise adjunction no. in order for the situation to become, as it were, 
socially expedient. Nah. The tramfumcation of the marketability or the client's marketability must, and let me emphasize, please, must be made iliodidactic and in no way, shape, or form be, me, uh, be misconstrued under the precepts of the subcommittee's block funding rigidity or misrepresented or however, and for that matter, and again because of the proposed manifest discourse which would and clearly should with pronounced respect for the importance of the relationship between the variable be associated in conjunction with an hermetic reflex uh, notion. Yes, certainly. If I may digress and quite temporarily interrupt the shimra of the potential of this most illuminating supposition, uh -huh. Professor, we must seek the application and again the vast supplication yes. of the where yes. within or contained by the no, omni. Yes, certainly, certainly. And with qualitatively good reason, I should wish to suppose, uh, again, in keeping with and by placing uh, specific emphasis upon the location in deference to the parastructure of the intentional misuse of the where, the deliberate application of the chorosphere. Mm -hmm. But please, uh, if I may simply deviate and or with fecund appreciation of the rest's uh, representation, placate my otherwise hazardous transgression, well, in proportion to the ad hominy of the presentation, you, uh, you understand. Uh, of course, Professor. And I wish to adhere to the material in toto as well as present that quantity of information as a given. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you indeed, my good doctor. Certainly, the uh, gratuitous nomenclature, which by uh, another pretext would and, and most definitely ought to be construed as the oligarchical relationship, and however, and please, again, in Straco's form of hubris, uh, the advanced ritualization, particularly in the holistic or revy sexual, would seem to implicate and or point to a dexterous anointment of the rebos from the appropriate, if not extra resources of the yo. Hey, what are you actually saying? Well, excuse me, <laughs> Professor. Uh, previous to uh, your reflectory obfuscation, you proposed a trivious pond's stipulation. Mm. Now, I believe this has caused considerable consternation amongst your colleagues, much to the detriment of the omni structure as a whole and in the semi-quavering mm, yeah. trichotomy in particular. Well, now, would you agree with that? Well, yes, indeed. The situation has been considered and uh, addressed. And in respect and certain deference to the subcommittee's report, and, and of course, in observation and respect to the a priori reductionist arrangement proposed in subpoena of the court's current jurisdiction, of my administration's candid relationship with the press is a matter of public record. However, within the parameters of this melodicletic discourse, and uh, given mm -hmm. the legal and political climate of the nation as a whole, and upon the advice of not only my agents and accountants, but uh, my team of lawyers and legal advisors, mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'm left with no other alternative but to Neither confirm nor deny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, by the way, I wanted to say to you, I really appreciated this time that we spent. Oh, well, thank you very much. No, no, look, it's me. It's me because I, I need to thank you because without you, this is not going to be an issue. No, no, let me sincerely say this. No, honestly, let me say, I think you people are doing a super job. It's fantastic. I want to thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's great. Good night now. Okay, good night. Thank you.
Got a wheel, rolls in my head, rolls in my head. Can you feel it? Can you feel it now? Telling me that a change gonna come in this world someday.
fist It's a girl I kissed It's a world I missed And they say that it's just a smile away It's my lucky day It's my lucky day It's my lucky day Got a wheel, say rose in my head, rose in my head. Can you feel it? Can you feel it now? Telling me there's a change gonna come in this world someday. It's a girl I kissed It's a world I missed And they say that it's just a smile away It's my lucky day It's my lucky day It's my lucky day It's my lucky day It's my lucky day
Hey, I finally impressed my dog. For months now, we've been competing at various sports and events, games, activities, you know, basic competition stuff. And she's been kicking my ass at everything we did. Golf, bicycling, tennis, chess, stock market, bingo, the lottery, the Sunday crossword fucking puzzle. I mean, everything, man. It's kind of depressing. But, hey, today, I got her. I finally got her. I really got her. We, uh, we had snuck into the Beatrice building, and we were hiding ourselves in a service elevator for right up to the 13th floor penthouse. Uh, Buddy, which is my dog, um, had been talking about getting a shot at this pit bull who uh, worked for the Jewish realtor investor who was on the Beatrice board whose who's, uh, apartment office we were headed up to. And I had been toying with the idea of setting up a secret video camera in his office so I could blackmail the son of a bitch when he does his daily noontime anal sex slave routine with those nine-year-olds. Uh, so we set up the equipment and figured the logistics and we're in the process of leaving. Oh, by the way, I had flawlessly and quite stealthily, I must admit, arranged the camera to catch every sordid, lecherous detail, complete with remote studio-quality audio recording. It was killer. And uh, Buddy was outside finishing, uh, removing the face and the jaw of the uh, <coughs> kind of screwed-up pit bull by way of a sneak attack. Kind of came around beh behind her and slit her throat and uh, placed the twitching hulk of her mangled dog into a paper shredder and <laughs> was sadistically and slowly turning the machine on and off. It was wild. And then I paused at the emergency stairwell as we were slipping out, which had a sliding window. I said to her, hey, you want to see something really spectacular? Oh, yeah, what? Let's get the fuck out of here. Come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This will just take a minute. You see that guy coming into the building down below? That's J. David Klenerman, the cocksucker who we just took care of. Watch this. And with that, I pulled down my pants and arch up a deep blast of coffee stench, lime yellow piss. Oh, God, it was gorgeous. We magnificently cascading earthward. It was amazing. Just as the Ark was about to make contact with J. David, I yelled down to him, hey you, this is from God. And as he looked up in startled shock and with his mouth open, the golden shower was brought forth upon his gaping countenance and $7,000 suit. It was beautiful, beautiful. My dog went absolutely bonkers wild. She started farting and rolling in the, st in the stairs. She was convulsed with laughter and hysterics. She was screaming, holding her sides. Right on. Right on. I finally impressed my dog. I am the standard bearer. I am he who carries the torch. I am he who lights the flame of eternal vision. I am he who leadeth the masses valiantly through the wilderness. I am he who bringeth the truth. I am he who comes down from Hosanna on high. I am he who smelleth the asshole and fecal pile of a Manx kitten with worms. I am the standard bearer. Hey, dude, huh? me and the friends are headed to an ear fucking, man. Mm -hmm. It's the latest. You know, when you're jonesing on crack, you bang the head. Oh, mm -hmm. dude, it splits open mm -hmm. in the brains. Oh, fucking A, man. They're really cool. And besides, there's plenty of fucking ears to bang. Whoa. Lots of them, man. Whoa. Hey, why don't you check it out? Right That's on. Cool. Lots of them, man. Hey, check it out. Right on. I've decided to get a sex reassignment. I think it's the right thing to do. I don't know what to say about it. I've gone all my life as a... When I was knowing and feeling all the while that I was a... Uh... So, I've decided...
Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, or sin, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Talking about those seven years of tribulation, which I'll discuss again in just a few moments. I was previously obfuscated, but now I'm situationally hypomyoglypetic. Most assuredly, I am possessed by remunerative parsimonious quabobobulism in both vestigious and proibioid circulation. So, based upon the dextotension, which I clearly foretook to be cretentious, I find that I'm observing my obsessive, excessive characters running rampant lately, yet 
In observation, I'm learning to appreciate the depth, clarity, and resolve of these neo avonflationists and the ornothobriated percolators. Oh, and the iliophlegmatic schemners, not to mention my next guest. I was taking a shit at the county courthouse. And two flaming homosexuals flitted in and entered the booth next to mine. Within a matter of moments, I heard sucking and slurping and gurgling noises. And I looked to my left, underneath the partition, and noticed one of them in the fecal position, pants at ankles, and the other one placed lovingly and ceremoniously between his legs. Work it out, big boy. Work it out, big boy. Work it out, big boy. Work it out. Work it out, big boy. Work it out. As the seated one kept murmuring and moaning. I paused for a moment to wipe, then tossed the tissue over the divider. I heard a gasp. Then, licking, chewing sounds. I decided not to flush. What the heck? Maybe they were hungrier than I thought. My father is a dead smoker. I think I'll sue R.J. Reynolds. My sister is a pregnant whore. I think I'll sue Planned Parenthood. My brother is an ignorant chump. I think I'll sue the school board. My other brother is a fucking junkie. I think I'll sue the CIA after all. They're the ones who brought the shit in. My dog got hit by a cement mixer. I think I'll sue Mack Trucks and Kaiser. My motorcycle and stereo were stolen. I'm already suing the police department. My girlfriend fell asleep while freebasing cocaine and burned down my house. I won $255,000 in a judgment against the fire department, and the lawsuit with the Bolivian government is pending. To blame. I've got to find someone to blame. Someone to blame. Doctor, I don't uh, quite agree with you at this point. Uh, uh, assuming that the excuse me, excuse me, if I may, please. 
Excuse me, if I if I may oh. just interrupt for a moment, please. Pardon me. Excuse me. I'm I'm sure there are quite a few of you who are exhibiting not in the least amount of confusion and possible consternation from the preceding characterizations. Now, I I'd, I'd like to point out, if I may, that the intent of the director has not been to alienate or provocate anyone, nor has it been to crumble any individual's fragile worldview. The director has chosen, in keeping within the allowable precepts of this socio-historical documentation and the guidelines set forth by the Foundation's policy towards funding, to produce works within the modern genre of the excessive, or as it has been so aptly termed, the theater of terrorism. This theater of terrorism is simply the reflection of the madness coursing through our current international societies as a collective, and is by no means the personal view of the director or that of our sponsor, the Presidential Task Force on Traditional American Values. I'd, I'd like to take this opportunity at this time to assuage any fears or guilt, real or imagined, or any misconceptions concerning the presentation of this theater by members of the said traditional audience. However, this documentation and its particulars are governed by the flow of society and lie outside the boundaries of any individual or committee's control. Again, I wish to point out the fact that this performance collection is the fruit of an extensive, exhaustive study into the cacophonous, irrational, nonlinear restructuring of many of the experiences and relationships to be found within this particular society. In addition, the attempt has been made to present to you the various counterpositions or locations of hope, as it were, that do exist and serve as glue for our present societal framework and indeed as points of continuum for those who choose to see them as such. All you've got, baby. The rest will leave you someday. Hey. The way to face time, man, is with the uh, clean, clear feeling about yourself. Based on simple concerns of mind that uh, free you from worries, guilt, and compounded fears. Uh, the trivial. The garbage detail. Every one of us has got the uh, trivial. So change the terms, man, and make it easier on yourself. Give yourself Better the freedom you need. Hey, nobody else is going to do it for you, baby. Change the terms. This is the path of physical science of perspective, babe. Fluid and origin. Hey, boogie down. Change the term, boogie down. Change the term. Change the term, baby. Boogie down. Change the term, baby. Uh, boogie down. You know, the freedom cheers for the asking, babe. Believe in yourself. Hey, nobody else is going to do it for you, babe. So change the terms.
Bob Crane got shot in the head. Freddie Prince shot himself in the head. <laughs> Dan Blocker burst his heart. Errol Flynn had syphilis, malaria, and tuberculosis. Sid Vicious jacked himself on smack. John Eric Hexen accidentally popped a blank wad into his forehead. They got excellent cash for his organ. John Wayne was eaten from the middle by a malignant persistent growth beyond even the Duke's control. John Bonham pickled his liver. Keith Moon got it up the ass while he was pickling. But what the hell? He was having a good time, huh? Marilyn Monroe dozed off while uh, waiting for Jack and Bobby to come on over. Jimmy the Electric Messiah Hendrix puked into his lung. A fucking waste, man. A real loss. Chuck Hughes died in the field. Vic Morrow got cut in half when it caused a rice paddy with two Vietnamese kids by falling helicopter. Judy Garland left it over the rainbow, then went looking for it through a scotch glass and capsule. Peter Duell shot his temple. Natalie Wood struck her temple and drowned. Marty Robbins had a quadruple bypass, which didn't quite work out. Sorry, Marty. Wayne Allman and his uh, dumb fuck fool friend Pigpen thought they could make it under pig trucks. <laughs> well, the cast was a pig. And we fought a die quietly with dignity and gracious. Nelson Rosenwell died, however, with his cock up his secretary's ass. Jack Hasley slept on a cigarette. Charred Jack, right? Bogart saw the cigarette. Malcolm and Martin and Bobby and Jack saw it coming. Princess, Bay, uh, Princess Grace became a famous martyr. What a sad, lovely, famous jazz with caviar and champagne, yeah. Jim Morrison electrocuted himself in his bathtub. Pete Townsend died, then came back when he, you know, he was bored with the whole thing. Elvis couldn't hold the whole image together, so it uh, crumbled on the floor next to the toilet. Ronnie Van Zant was mangled by thousands of pounds of moving pressurized metal and plastic. John Belushi fucked up by not knowing how to limit his powders. He should have stuck to dope. So John Lennon was gunned down five slugs to the chest by way of the corporate conspiracy. <coughs> Marvin Gaye was gunned down by his father over petty cash. Mike Rockefeller disappeared in the jungles of Asia. They say he lives today with a tribe of primitive people. People who have apparently hold some key at the beginning of spoken communication. Right. Uh-huh. They also grow some incredible smoke. Mark Bolin was killed in a car. Steve Prefontaine was killed in a car. George Patton was killed in a car. Harry Chapin was killed in a car. James Dean was killed in a car. David Overstreet was killed in a car. Andy Kaufman had a cancer. Woo! She ate him up. Billy Holiday smacked. Billy Holden over booze. Cracked his head. Dickie Burton over booze. Bonnie Scott over booze and choked on his puke. No, 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 that's right. They found him behind the wheel with a heart attack or something. Jimmy Jones threw a private party for his good friend. They all had such a good time that, well, they just never really knew what hit him. Joe Delaney tried to swim when he couldn't. So did Dennis Wilson. Cuckoo Kim got his face pummeled. But while Billy Hickok was shot from the blind side, though he sensed it coming, Abraham Lincoln was shot from the blind side, though it didn't really matter to him one way or another. Harvey and George from San Francisco, well, they fed the brunt of Danny's Irish raise, my friend. But, you know, Danny got it in the end. After all, you got to pay the man eventually. Lyman Bostwick got a shotgun blast from a jealous boyfriend while he waited for a light to change. Joe Ross was an outstanding quarterback and became a legend. He died during his senior year at Cal from a strange incurable disease. Al Capone died from personal neglect. Some say it was a screwdriver knife to the brain. Frank Lieber died while jogging. Larry Gordon died while jogging in Arizona. Jim Fox, the consummate authority on running, died while jogging. Sharon Tate was just a party girl. And Brother Charles, well, Thurman Munson, who considered himself an expert pilot, died at the wheel of his plane. Roberto Clemente, my man, however, was never found after ditching it in the ocean on his way to help the refugees. Bruce Lee was administered a secret sacred death blow, which dropped him six months later unexplainable. Brian Piccolo died to rise again on the ensilvered 70 millimeter a hero. J. Roberts died a legend, by the way. Rod Sterling was never here. Lenny Bruce was murdered for his loose flowing tongue. Karen Carpenter should have eaten that donut I offered her, by God. Amelia Earhart is still up there. Taco and Vanzetti were butchered by the state. The Shah died karmatically. Anwar was smiling the last time I saw him. And I'm not really sure exactly how Sonny Liston went. 
Though I know that Howard Hughes dies a looter. Who's the what? Bill Beckman died of aspirin, quaaludes, and Coca-Cola. Lee Howard broke his neck in his headrest of his 68 308 Ferrari. Frank Moore went to the speed of 3 miles an hour in a 72 Cutting Keno. Well, uh, Mike is no more. Rob Tysman's last uh, lover, Maurice, was recently found to have the AIDS virus spreading wildly about his brain. Can you believe this? And Joseph Kennedy had the brain of his daughter, Rosemary, disconnected. And subsequently, and consequently, they both died vegetables. Joe Jr., by the way, died a hero cooked in the secret mission and mission for glory. Captain Wilcox, West Point 65, was fragged by his platoon. Alistair Crowley lives in all of us. Stephen Biko.
My soul is rent with anguish because of you. My heart is pain. Behold. I am full of the Spirit. In so much that my brain has no strength. joy to be home. Into the depths of the sea. Come forth to lay their heads upon. He shall be made strong. Fruit of thy loins. The fruit of thy loins. I will rise up. Spokesman of thy loins. His name shall be called after thee. The fruit of thy loins. O King, we have not sinned. The blossom of a thistle, which when it is fully ripe, if the wind bloweth, is driven forth upon the face of the land. Behold, we are guiltless. Behold, we are strong. We shall not come into bondage.
The emasculation of the American male, the devolving of the male in this society, the removal of his physical and spiritual testicles, the neutering of the modern man through number and exactitude, insensibility and pastel, soft nylon cotton, frozen microwave fresh foods, surface images of manhood, strength, virility, thinness, all smiles knowing exactly who, what, where he is, and is going. Productivity, wealthy, secure, concerned, sincere. Below this false, unattainable surface lies insecurities, lies, broken minds, <laughs> and hearts, a tangle of confusion. The modern man wants off this treadmill of expectation, but he is not allowed to. He is kept at surface level. Woman, Hold out of reach ideals and goals over our boy's head, whipping his little ball, <laughs> squeezing his little balls dry with false assumptions and twisted expectations, sarcastic bits hinge, keep our body in line. My emasculated male, my male without a center, just toe the line. <laughs> Be wrong. I could be wrong.